All right, everyone. Last presenter of the day, Cisco. Uh, last vendor of the day, four presentations. And uh, just kind of recapping them, there was uh, a, a multi-cloud conversation with uh, using a Nexus dashboard. Uh, there was a Meraki dashboard update, uh, which was nice to see. Uh, that we started talking about IPsec or the ability to use IPsec tunnels from the access layer. And then the very last one was an SD access conversation uh, around shared services. So within the cloud demonstration, the, the, the first presentation, started talking about the ability to use Nexus dashboard to control multi-cloud environments, which back in 2018, uh, that was my first real exposure to, uh, to ACI. And something that Cisco had said at the time was that, oh, well, anything that you do inside of ACI in, in terms of policies and whatnot are portable to the cloud. And that was, that was a great selling feature, uh, at least for my boss. Uh, as soon as Cisco said the word cloud, uh, because we were we were trying to become more cloud centric at the time, uh, that that was all he needed to hear, and and we started using ACI, and it just never really came to fruition, and I didn't quite understand why. If it was we didn't ask the right questions, if our team didn't really quite explain what the the availability was of taking those concepts, those constructs, and porting them over into different cloud environments. Uh, but that was 2018, and things are very different today. So that was the, the first demo we got to see was, well, it, it was a conversation first about the, the different ways that you can uh, build out or the different environments that this can work in. So they gave us four options. One was cloud only, so it's cloud provider to cloud provider. Uh, the other was a hybrid uh, introducing ACI. Uh, the other was a hybrid of on-prem, so multiple ACI environments. However, it's key to note here that you, you can't bring NXOS into it, that it, it is ACI only. Uh, and then external connectivity, so SD-WAN branch office type configurations. And I, I believe what they actually showed us, it was the, it was the, the on-prem, the, the hybrid on-prem, and the demo was recorded, which it would have been nice if it would have been live, but as they, they sort of explained to us, um, it was loosely cloud can be finicky at times, so uh, each presenter had, I think it was 30 minutes, and it, and it was pretty, tried to keep it right on those 30 minutes, so everyone had equal time to talk. So that was loosely why they said, all right, you know, we're, we're going to show you this video, and it worked. Um, they spun up a set of, uh, essentially they established connectivity between an Azure presence an AWS presence and a, a physical uh, physical data center. And the thing that they skipped over, which I get it, there, there wasn't enough time, was, I keep shaking the table, is how to actually stitch that together and, and actually build those policies and those templates. Because going back to 2018, th that's what Cisco meant, was that you'd be able to take those constructs and make them friendly with the cloud. I, I just wish we would have been able to see that. But by the end of the video, you know, it did work. They had ping going um, and it, it was a good presentation, uh, but that would have been one that I would have liked to actually spend a little bit more time with. Uh, I, I wouldn't have minded, honestly, if, if that had been an hour long on its own and we got to see more of that. Now, I, I don't know that I would have necessarily wanted every presentation to be been an hour, but I, I would honestly, I would have been fine with an hour on that one. Uh, next was the Meraki dashboard update, which it, it's an update. Uh, it definitely looks more modern. Um, so, uh, something that they put in there, which, which the presenter was pretty keen on pointing out, was the sort of the front page dashboard. And I, I don't think this is anything new, but I see it a lot where it's 
it's like um, like a speedometer uh, or a, a meter that goes back and forth to show how healthy your deployment is. I struggle with those. I don't know if I've just not been in the right environment where it makes sense. But the determining factors that judge why a meter goes up, sometimes they're very insignificant. Sometimes they're more significant. I, and sometimes more significant things have a higher impact. Like, I, I, I don't know how to properly use those. And I don't think that's any different here. Like, it's nice. It's pretty. But I, the gauges fall flat on me. I, I need to understand. I and mean, they had them in ACI as well. ACI was more of a, a health score. I think it was like 1 to 100 or something like that. Like, yeah, I, I get it. But I, I always struggle with those single panes of glasses, uh, single panes of glass. They just, uh, they, they always, mm, they're too general. They don't, they don't show enough detail. Like, I get the idea is for them not to show a lot of detail, but I don't know. They, they always feel weird to me. Uh, but the thing that I did like the most about the Meraki dashboard update was the ability, and it really was, it was just a button and you, and you click it, is to enable access to uh, beta access to the newer APIs, which <laughs> one of the largest criticisms that I have heard from Meraki just historically, going, going all the way back, even prior to Cisco's acquisition, is that the API was very lacking, and it just like and then after the sometime after the Cisco acquisition, it got a, a little a, a tiny bit, just a little bit better. And the fact that they're now giving end users the ability to toggle that on and not have to wait for it to come all the way out into production. Like maybe you don't want to do that in production, but if you do need some more of those APIs, it's just, it's nice to see that you have the ability to opt into that and to turn that on. Uh, something else that got pointed out is that some of those API things are, are basically uh, platform wide. So you enable it, it gets enabled for everything. Uh, others you need to enable per network. So that you know, you'll have to pay attention to, but it's just the fact that they're starting to do things like that. It's promising, and granted, it's taking some time, but they're hearing that, and 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 it's it's starting to show up. So the third presentation was about bringing IPsec tunneling to your access switches. Uh, so you got a 9300, and this needs to be an X series. So your your regular 9300s, uh, your non Xs won't be capable of doing this. But uh, you know, if you're going out to the internet, uh, it can be SSL, or if you're just internal to your network, you know, it can be SSL as well. Uh, but but really, that's that's the highest level of security that you're generally able to get without. Going through like a VPN tunnel, you know, something that's adding additional security to that. So they're baking in the ability to do an IPsec tunnel out to certain services. Uh, internally is a little bit different. You know, if you're running the right equipment from ends to ends, that can terminate the the, the tunnel. Uh, but it's 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 a cool it's a cool addition to security, and we're talking about apps that you would want to be more secure, anyways. So I, I think that there's some intelligence behind that. Uh, the speed it doesn't really seem to impact speed. They can do these tunnels up to uh, 100 gigs per second. Yeah, it was 100 gigs per second. So that's yeah, you know, that that's fast. Uh, you're you're not getting a ton of overhead on on a tunnel like that. Uh, it's not compatible with SD WAN though, and I, I don't recall if there was a, a good in-depth explanation why. But you can't use it in an SD WAN environment. Honestly, I would want SD WAN over this. Now, maybe you've got some other security requirement that would make you favor something like this over SD WAN. But just kind of as an just an engineer, you know, not necessarily circuit, uh, um, a, a security specific engineer. I, I kind of want the SD-WAN first, but you know, if you need it, it is there. 
Um, something that was weird that I didn't quite follow either is there is a there's a charge for it, and it's a dollar. I believe it's a dollar per switch to enable this functionality. So I, I don't know if that's subject to inflation. I, I don't know how the currency exchanges work on that. If it's just you know one local currency amounts, I <laughs> didn't even think to ask that. But you do have to pay a dollar to, to get it turned on. So shouldn't break the bank considering you just bought a 9300X, but it is an interesting thing to, to keep track of. Now, the last one was SD access and shared services, or offering of shared services with SD access. And I, I need to be careful not to, to rant too hard on this because I, I, I really, I, I think this is more complaint of sales than it is of the actual technology. So before I get into that, something that I picked up on the slide, which I, I didn't know was a thing, uh, is that apparently there's a plug and play as a service or a PNP cloud that you can get now. I love that. And, and that wasn't even part of the presentation. It was just a bit on the slide that I that happened to saw, or actually no, it was in the presentation, but it wasn't a focal point. And I distinctly remember the last time I was, I was working with DNA Center, how tricky the PNP process can be. Now, once you figure it out, you know, it's not so bad, but there are a lot of dependencies not a lot, but there are dependencies that you need to make sure are in place before the PNP stuff starts to work. And it's nice that there is a cloud version of that. So basically all you need is that internet connection and you can at least start the switch. Now it's not the full platform, you know, it's not, it's not like it's completely cloud hosted DNA center or anything like that, but just the ability to, to kind of switch that on or make that bit just a little bit easier. I, I think that's gonna be very beneficial really for anybody who uses the platform. But so so we get into the, to the shared access and we start talking about how you uh, assign the, uh, not the tags, but just the different way you start associating the services and how you distribute it around your, your SD access environment. And I, I just struggle, I struggle with the complexity of a lot of these services and not that they're difficult to understand. At, at a high level, they're all actually very easy to understand. And I, I apply this same gripe to ACI as well. But I've never had the fortune, maybe the fortune, I've never worked in an environment where I've been able to be single disciplined. You know, I've never worked on a data center team. I've never worked on a routing team, a wireless team, a security team, an edge switching team. Every networking team that I've worked for, and that that's working for two different billion dollar organizations, they've been multidisciplinary teams where the, the 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 joke that i used to tell is uh it's a good thing cisco doesn't start making vacuums because it would be up to my team to support it but, but that's the reality of those environments that i came out of and that's where i struggle with sd access and and aci is that the they're, they're super powerful like the ability to have this overlay where you can classify all of your traffic to a department. That, that's usually how these examples go. It's like, oh, here's the, the marketing VLAN. And that's how it used to be in the day. It's like, oh, you just put all of marketing on this VLAN and, and uh, you can use an access list to make sure that they can't get to the finance department, which is on a different VLAN. And we're, we're seeing like just an absolutely at super scale explosion of that idea with SD access to be able to break down the subnet barriers or the VLAN barriers or the routing barriers that apply and put security just on those general constructs. And it's very similar into ACI as well. <sighs> but you need to be on a in my opinion, the only way that scales 
is if your team can be dedicated to that function, maybe two functions, two closely related, two closely linked functions, because I just, I just don't see it. I don't see teams being able to spend the time to, to dedicate, to fully put in an SD access solution to the depth that I see Cisco present. And I'm not saying that they need to start putting in an easy button, but there have been too many times where I've seen the sales process talk about these. The, again, the grand, the constructs, which are easy to understand, but then when it comes time for that team to understand it and implement it and, and to operationalize it, it's, it's hard. And if you are a multidiscipline team, the multidiscipline teams that I've come from have not been financially equipped to take on technologies like that at the depth that Cisco sells them at, but that has never stopped Cisco from, from selling them or trying to sell them or try to minimize the uh, the lift that's necessary because that that did happen and I brought that specific question up for multidisciplinary teams and they said oh well you know as long as you you do the reading and you understand it I, I don't know I at risk of turning this into a half hour rant I'll, I'll just kind of leave it where I left it there I hope with all of those technologies that Cisco does come up with easier ways of implementing them. Uh, because at the big scale, when you do have a data center team, an access layer team, a route team, it makes a lot of sense where these things get get brought up and where how, how in-depth they can get configured and really the amazing power behind them. But that is not for everyone not for every organization, even billion dollar organizations. And I hope someday Cisco starts to react to that and make it easier for those groups. Even if it's like a, you know, an SD access light or an ACI light, uh, I guess that's kind of what Meraki is for SD-WAN. That's, that's kind of like a light version of SD-WAN. And, and I hate to say, uh, you know, it needs to be a Meraki version of ACI or a Meraki version of SD Access, but there, there's a lot of knobs in there, and if you don't have a team that can handle all those knobs, it can definitely be a bit much. But um, overall, I do like Cisco. That's where I started. All of my networking knowledge was with Cisco back in, in 1999, I think it was. That sounds about right. So uh, I, I was, though, overall very pleased with their presentations. Uh, but that gripe, it's more of a sales gripe than anything. So uh, that wraps up day one with Cisco there. Uh, so we had Broadcom, Open Gear, and Cisco. Great presentations. Uh, I'm definitely tired. So I'm going to try and uh, just kind of decompress here a little bit before we head out and grab some dinner. But uh, I'm excited for day two. Uh, we will get into it in the morning. I hope you tune in, and I'll see you then. Take care.